What's up, y'all? I got a new toy. This is the Yamaha PSR E373 keyboard. And um, I'm gonna tell you about why I decided to go with this particular one. But first, let's open the box. There it is, as you can see, it was safely packed with the styrofoam on the side and protective covering. Bop, and it's official. There's the power pack. And the stand and the manual. And there we are. So the reason why I decided to get this, I have a bunch of other keyboards and but the other ones are way more expensive and way more heavy. So this is actually, first of all, a much more affordable option. It's super lightweight, like it's, it's nothing. And it actually has built-in speakers. So, yeah, I mean, that my thought is I got this because I wanted to take it outside and just kind of play in the park. And I was thinking about different combinations with having a Bluetooth speaker and then using my MIDI controller. But the problem with the Bluetooth speaker is that there's latency. So, you know, and, and it's kind of a lot of latency. It's, I tested it out with my uh, AirPods and I was like, I can't even play. It's too much of a delay. So here it is going direct. There's no uh, extra speaker that you have to worry about taking. No, it's not super loud, but I'm not really trying to put on like a show show. I just want to play for people passing by and, and mostly for my own enjoyment. So in this situation, this is the move and it takes six AA batteries, so you don't have to worry about any kind of electricity. It does have an aux in, here I'll show you the back. It does have an aux in, so I can, you know, play along with anything that I stream off my phone. Any playlists that I may have, it has a sustain pedal, input jack, it also has a headphone jack quarter inch, and then it also has the USB, if you want to use it as a MIDI controller to plug into any uh, DAW or laptop or what have you. And another reason why I decided to get this, you know, I mean, wait, first of all, let me just back up and say God bless Sam Ash and Guitar Center for still being in business. There was no one in the parking lot <laughs> and there was pretty much no one in the store. It's kind of a sad state compared to the way that those stores used to be growing up as a kid. But they still exist and they still are serve a very important purpose from the fact that, you know, everything online, the pictures look great. You can't, in, in a situation like this, you can't really pick a keyboard unless you actually touch the keys. You, you go through the sounds, you figure out, do you like the sounds? And honestly, like before I actually went to the store, in my mind, I thought I was going to get the, the Roland Go because the pictures look way cooler online. It's a little bit more expensive. So you think it would be a better piece of gear, right? But not so. When I got to the store, they had the Go and this particular one, this is made by Yamaha, set up side by side. And I immediately knew that this was a better option for me personally. The keys feel way better. They are, I don't know what you call this. 
it's kind of key but but it's a good but it's a good quality kind of key like this you know i yes i like the full action but i'm also learning to love how this feels as well and these are not all created equal some keyboards have this like semi half key kind of option and they don't feel good this feels good so the problem with the Roland is they were trying to make it be like a weighted key situation where the, the actual white came all the way down, but it was, it was just clunky. You know, at that price point, I think they need to make a decision. Like either you're going to make it more expensive and, and really do like a, a weighted key or semi-weighted key kind of, uh, kind of deal, or you just stick with this, this kind of key. And, and do it like that. So I'm gonna plug it in and show you some sounds, but first I'm gonna eat dinner. Oh, and one more thing, just in case you were curious. Here is the music stand, which I doubt I'm gonna use very much, but it's nice that it's here. As you can see, it easily popped in right there, and it's at a good angle, so you can put anything like a iPad or any kind of book or sheet music, conveniently there for you to see. And as I said, here is the manual, which I'm not even sure why they still sell these or include these because everything is online. All the documentation is online. But nevertheless, is thick too jeez there it is <laughs> and as you can see i'm getting ahead of myself because i'm hungry but here is the charger and um pretty sure it's just a standard thing but let's take a look all right oh, Okay, so this is what the charger looks like. And there's this connection on the end to go into the Okay, I'm about to plug it in, but before we even do that, I want to show you the battery option in the back, what you know you're gonna get. So this is the bottom of the unit. And as you can see here is the battery port. It takes six AA batteries. So I'm gonna put Actually, let's do that. Uno. Let's put the cover back on. And it's interesting because it is kind of at a little bit of an angle. So it's not, it's not flush as you would think. That is correct. Okay, and you heard the snap. Push and hold the power. And there we got juice. With just the batteries, as you can see, it's not plugged in. Turn the volume up. All right, and I don't want to waste the battery, so let us plug it in to the wall for now. So if you keep on watching, I'm gonna hopefully be able to show you how to layer the sounds and also split the sounds. That's my objective. 
to figure that out right now. But I also want to let you hear some of the sounds as well. Of course, as you can see, as I just kind of pan through what the buttons are, there's a lot of stuff like for beginners, for basic. You see there's a, a spot that says lessons. I don't know why they put this stuff together. Um, I guess, you know, obviously this is catering more towards the beginner pianist, but I think that they should also make something that's a little bit more, you know, that serves this purpose, but is also professional as well. Because I honestly don't care for like the, the demo songs and the lessons and like this whole thing down here. Like I'm not going to mess with like the songs. No, I'm good. But the reason, like I said, the reason why I got this is because it's portable. It's, it's a good price point. So like if you get caught in the rain at a gig, it's not going to be the end of the world. That's another issue. I don't want to bring my expensive, you know, Roland Phantom and all the awesome stuff that I have that I feel like that should stay safe in the studio. Um, and also, you know, the, the purpose of having the high end equipment is so that you learn how to use it. And a lot of times when you get on the bigger gigs, you know, you can just kind of request what you want and ask what ask for what you know. Just roll up with a USB stick and load the, the keyboard that's on the gig up to the, the settings that you like and then you're ready to rock. But, you know, in situations where you're actually bringing your own board to gigs and you want to just kind of have the mobility, like this is a much better option in my opinion. Like it doesn't need to sound perfect or amazing but this sounds it sounds good it, it does it does let me stop talking and actually play so this is the concert piano and then over here you can change cycle through different sounds so now we're on a different piano a little softer there's the bright harpsichord I think this is kind of general MIDI but it's it's a little different I love a good road sound this is not a road this is an EP it sounds okay darker jazz EP phase EP trim EP C stands for. It starts to sound the same now. I feel like I heard that one already. Stage EP. That's a little weird. Galaxy EP. Hype time. I was messing with this funky EP in the store. I really like this. Love that. DX Modern. Venus EP. That, you know, so it has a lot of options. Uh, some of them sound similar, but um, I think, as I said, I will probably play a lot with the Funky EP when you want some sauce because it has a cool, cool effects built into it. And then maybe my main one 
Might be, what was the one that I said sounded dark? I think this one. And then of course, like, you know, it has guitars and organs. Oh, it has a bunch of great organs too. Um, getting more into organ uh, as I get more into keys here. The one thing that I will say that does not have that I wish it did is it does not have a pitch bend. No pitch bend anywhere. So you can't you can't go uh, and do any kind of uh, scoops or falls or nothing like that. Is there a place to increase the Leslie speed? I don't think so, probably not. Here's the right side. Here's the display. It, as you can see, as you play notes, it actually shows you on the display. It's not touchscreen, that's irrelevant. These are all the different parameters on the readout. Voice, style. Let's just mess with some of the buttons here. So that's the metronome. How do you increase the tempo? Oh, tap tempo right here. <laughs> we don't want that. But obviously that's set. I, you know what, actually, I am I might mess with the drum machine in here. That's kind of cool, as opposed to just having the metronome, so. And are there fills? Auto fill. Uh, but then it starts giving something that's weird. Let's go back. Oh, it's the ending. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, I guess, you know, if you get inside it and you want to... Yeah, I mean, if you learn it, if you know what the ending sounds like, then you can actually do something based upon that. That's cool. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of options, a lot of flexibility here. Function. Memory. Gosh, articulation. Songs, voice, style. And over here is the, uh, the dual for the layers and then also the split point. So let's try to figure this out. Um, as you can see, obviously, there's, there's quite a lot of cool features here. So split. And as you can see over here, it displayed split over there on the screen. Then it automatically went to a bass sound. That's cool. That's kind of cool. Right now, our split point is at G. Right now, I'm hitting the function button and it is cycling me through. Ooh, a split point right there. It doesn't look like I can go back. I just have to cycle through the list again. <sighs> Volume, finger type, song, reverb. Jeez. And I wish I could go back. I don't even know how deep this, uh, there's a lot of options inside this function button right here. Storage, play mode, auto off battery. Ooh, see that's weird because I wish I could go back. There's got to be a way to go backwards with these numbers here because they're all numbered. Initial send is number 39. 
Oxen volume is number 40. So I want to go to the split point, which I think was at the very beginning of the list. For some reason, you would think that this decrease would um, take you back, but it's not. I wonder if I type in the number manually. No, that's not doing it. Transpose, tuning, split point, here we go. All right, now it's at number 54, and the buttons over here are actually changing it. So let's, I'm surprised it doesn't say C4 or C3 or something like that. Right now it's at uh, 59. did in fact change before the split point was at the G and now it's at the C. Excellent. So that's how to do the split. If you want to get off of split, you just hit this button and it's back to normal. Let's see how to change the different sounds. Let's change the bass sound. Okay, <laughs> it's important. So in order to change the bass sound, what you need to do is you need to hold split down like that, and then you can cycle through the different bass sounds. Now it's, I went too far, I'm in the guitar bank. Let's go back to a bass, holding down split, increase, slap bass, dynamic. Seinfeld. Okay, so that's how to do the split. If you want to change the sound of the right hand, all you got to do is hit voice at the top. That brings you back to the right hand. And then you can change like so. And let's get off of split. And now it's all organ again. So let's, cool, that's been established. Let's go on to the dual function, which is the layer option. So I'm going to hit this. The main sound, let's change it to a piano. Cycle down through. To zero. Okay, now we'll go to dual. Let's see, dual has been activated on the left. It sounds like the the layered sound is other another piano an octave away because I'm just hitting one note and it's playing octaves. So, I held that down. The dual voice is concert EP. Let's change it to a string. Oops, slow strings. There you have it. I wonder if there's a way to change the volume of the strings. Probably down here in function. Yep, double volume. It's 107. And that came right up, so it must be kind of linked. There you have it. So softer strings. That's a nice layer, so you can control the volume of the double as well. And honestly, I mean, <laughs> that's all you really need. I mean, that's all I need for the purpose of this keyboard, what I bought it for. So, 
Yeah, that was a deep dive into the PSR E373 by Yamaha. Great board for the price. Amen to that. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Watch some other videos. Give this video a thumbs up. And feel free to leave any comments you may have in the comment section. And I will do my best to answer. Like I said, this is day one of me having this. So, you know, I'm only going to learn more and more stuff about it. If you have any questions and I discover something that's like really important, I might make another video. But for now, we're going to rock with this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.